welcome to Epworth United Methodist Church, where we follow the example of Christ by welcoming, nurturing, and serving all people with love. Greetings, friends. It is good to be together in this way until we can be together in person again. I love you, and I miss you, and I look forward to May 2nd, when we are returning to in-person worship, so mark your calendars. You'll be receiving more information about that in the coming weeks, um, Facebook, email, on the web. Um, but of course, we will be continuing uh, safe distance, wearing masks at all times when you're in the church building. Um, but I hope that you will plan to join us if you are healthy uh, beginning on May 2nd. In the meantime, we're grateful that we can, can continue to provide food for our vulnerable neighbors and Helping Hands Health and Wellness Center is open with uh, TB shots and health care for those who are uninsured and underinsured in our community. So thank you for your faithful stewardship uh, through your regular giving and special giving during this time and throughout the year that allows us to continue to remain open and uh, continuing to be in ministry. Of course, you can give electronic banking on the web or through the mail, um, sending it to the church. This is Holy Week, beginning today with Palm Sunday. This Thursday, we call Maundy Thursday, uh, and there will be a special service um, that will be posted on the website, on this page, the sermons page, earlier in the day on Thursday so that you can view it throughout the afternoon or evening whenever it is convenient to you. It is a for service of communion as we remember Jesus' last supper with his disciples before he goes out into the Garden of Gethsemane to pray, is betrayed, and arrested. There will not be a special Good Friday service, but I encourage you to spend some quiet time that day to reflect on the suffering death of Jesus through which he shares in our suffering and we are saved from our sins as he is lifted up on the cross. And next Sunday, we will gather again in this way when we celebrate Christ's glorious resurrection. It is also the first Sunday of the month, and so for both this Thursday and next Sunday, um, please come to worship um, uh, on the web prepared with some form of bread and some form of drink so that we can partake in um, Holy Communion together. Uh, wherever we are, we will partake as one body on both Thursday evening for Maundy Thursday and next Sunday on the first Sunday of the month. As far as prayer requests, we want to continue to hold Tom Pritchard in our prayers. Tom had a major stroke on Tuesday and has been in Riverside Hospital since then. A couple of days ago, they were able to get him to sit up and move both of his arms and legs, which were a good sign. Um, he is still on the ventilator. Uh, and uh, when I talked with Jessica last, he had had, um, the, the following day had not been a good day for him. So uh, it is going to be a long journey for Tom and therefore for Jessica and for their family. So um, please hold them in prayer and uh, we will continue to give updates as we know them um, via the email prayer chain. And of course, we continue to hold in prayer folks who um, continue to contract COVID-19. Um, Lynn Moyer just shared with me on Friday that her great nephew, Caleb, who is five months old, has a minor case of um, COVID-19. And um, we don't hear of many 
um, children that young having that. So um, we hold um, that family in prayer. Uh, and so it's a reminder that even as people get vaccinated and the numbers are getting better, and, and um, uh, especially in Ohio, that this is still a pandemic and we need to make good choices and, and pray for those who are recovering, have uh, long-term recovery processes, um, and those on the front lines are healthcare professionals and, and those who are financially recovering, especially with their businesses and the like. So we hold all of that in prayer. And any prayer requests that you have during the week, you can communicate that to Susan in the church office so that we can share those on our prayer chain. Um, you can also call me directly or communicate with me directly so that we can be in prayer with you and for you and, um, and can check in with you, let you um, and find out how you are doing. We want to stay in touch. Uh, we love you, we care about you, and we want to be in ministry with you and for you uh, in this um, uh, interim time when we can't be together in any other way. Let us be in prayer. This day is yours, O God, and we rejoice that you have awakened us to share in it. As we hear again the phrases and stories so familiar to us, help us to identify ourselves in the words and actions of people long ago. So touch us that our lives may reflect your teaching, join your parade, and bow down before your glory. Teach us, holy God, to know the mind of Christ and live by his example of humble obedience. Meet us in the midst of our brokenness and unfaithfulness to heal and restore. Let your face shine on us even in the shadow of the cross when we feel alone or abandoned. We entrust our time and all of our lives to your unfailing hand. Gracious God, we lift up the prayers of our hearts, the concerns we have named, the concerns we lift up to you now. We pray for our church and its ministries and all whom we serve. We pray for our nation and pray for its healing in all the ways that it needs, physically with the coronavirus, but also healing of divisions, hate, racism, and poverty. We especially pray for our Asian American brothers and sisters and for their safety in the midst of racism. Use us as vessels of your healing balm, of truth and justice in personal situations and in our communities and in our nation. We rejoice in our blessings and all that you give us and do for us, for vaccines, for medical science, for support systems, for strength and hope in difficult times. We thank you and praise you in the precious and powerful name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us when we pray to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I 
come to the light. Confess that I need you, Lord, I come to the light. Confess that I'm poor, Lord, I come to the light. Confess that I'm wretched and blind. Wretched and blind. All myself and Confess that I need you. All myself and Our scripture reading is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Tell him, the Lord needs it and will send it back shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to. And the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their coat cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus went into Jerusalem and went into the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Holy God, how good it is to be together in spirit. Open our hearts, open our minds to hear a familiar story afresh, that we would learn what it means to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ once again. We pray in your name. Amen. So this is the day we celebrate Jesus's triumphant entry into Jerusalem. When the disciples and then a crowd not only wave branches, but also take off their cloaks as a sign of respect for the king, shouting praises to the one who has come to save them. So it seems odd for me to be here in an all but empty room by myself, waving a single palm branch, ready to have a one-person parade and sing, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord but I trust that you are praising our Savior with me wherever you are. For Jesus, however, it was not a day of celebration, but for making a statement about what kind of king he was. 
what kind of kingdom he had introduced and invited people to be a part of throughout his ministry, the kingdom of God, the reign of love and mercy and justice, a call to a different way of living than the way of the world, an act of resistance to the powers and principalities, including the kingdom of Rome in which they were living. And ultimately, it would become a funeral procession in disguise. But before he entered, he needed transportation. He needed an appropriate way to enter the city to make his statement, to make the steep walk from the Mount of Olives down into the holy city. So he sends two of his disciples to a small town ahead of them, likely Bethphage, as they were staying in Bethany, perhaps at the home of Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. Preacher Tom Long suggests that maybe the disciples sent were James and John. They had earlier been trying to negotiate with Jesus to sit at his left and right hand when he came into his kingdom, still not understanding what kind of kingdom Jesus was introducing. To help them understand, they were sent on an errand to acquire a donkey. To negotiate with an owner to just borrow the donkey for a few hours, hoping, hoping that he would take their, or at least the Lord's, word for it. This wasn't punishment, but a teachable moment about the kingdom of God. As one writer suggests, they had no other task in the whole world more important than fetching the donkey. If they would have not done it, they would have been disobedient. But there was nothing greater for them at that moment than to fetch the donkey for Christ. I wish that we might do every task, small or great, in this obedience. There is nothing greater than obedience to Christ, he writes. In fact, over half of the passage was spent acquiring the donkey. Jesus gives specific directions to the errand runners as to where to go, what to look for, what to do, and what to say. And for once, they did exactly what he told them to do without discussion or question. They were obedient. They fulfilled the task. They returned with the requested animal. And that animal would teach us even more about obedience and even discipleship. It is obviously important that Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey. There is great symbolism in that. Not only is it a symbol of humility, but it is also a sign based on the prophecy of Zechariah that he comes as a king of peace. He is coming in opposition to the violence and oppression of Rome. He is pushing back on the idea that might makes right, that violence is 
the way to power and instead is bringing in a kingdom of mercy and violence and love that reconciles, that overcomes hate and brings transformation. It is a kingdom that brings salvation, not only from sin, but also from pain, from fear, from loneliness, from divisions, from poverty, and all of our isms. It is a kingdom of grace and forgiveness where all are welcome to come as we are, but find that he never leaves us as we are. So Jesus used the donkey to help communicate his message. He didn't, Jesus didn't say a word as he rode into Jerusalem. He didn't respond as the crowds cheered and threw their cloaks and waved branches in celebration, shouting, save us, blessings and praise. He simply rode along. He let the donkey be the messenger. The donkey, simply by carrying Jesus into Jerusalem, communicated that his kingdom was at hand, that he was coming in humility and peace to be a different kind of king and to reign and to save in a radical new way. The donkey carried Jesus to where he needed to be, where he would spend his final week facing off with those powers that stood in the way of God's redeeming love, where he would ultimately be arrested, beaten, and crucified for our salvation, and then would rise from the dead. Hear those words again. The donkey carried Jesus to where he needed to be so that Jesus could continue his mission to the very end and into a new beginning, new life. Isn't that what we are called to do as well? Isn't that what it means to be obedient, to be a disciple? Many of us have heard of or read about Corrie ten Boom. She was a Christian whose testimony of suffering in a Nazi concentration camp and God's grace through it all has touched millions of lives. At one point in a press conference following a ceremony in which she was given an honorary degree, one of the reporters asked her if it was difficult remaining humble while hearing so much acclaim. She replied immediately, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday on the back of a donkey, and everyone was waving palm branches and throwing garments on the road and singing praises, do you think for one moment it entered the head of that donkey that any of that was for him? She continued, 
If I can be the donkey on which Jesus Christ rides in his glory, I give him all the praises and all the honor. That is our call, too, to carry the Lord to wherever he can be glorified, to be obedient where he directs us. So we offer ourselves to serve and to glorify the Lord, to carry Jesus and his love, his truth, his justice, and his mercy wherever he sends us, to be obedient to his call. We do it as representatives of peace and humility and gentleness, like the donkeys of biblical times. So as we move through this holy week, journeying with him to Jerusalem and to the cross, and finally to the empty tomb, let us ask ourselves, where are we being called to carry Jesus right now? Where is his love needed? Where is his mercy and kindness needed? Where is his truth needed? How can we be the Lord's donkey? Amen. Oh.
Holy Week and always. Let us be obedient to the Lord, carrying his love and mercy and grace and justice wherever he leads us. Amen. <laughs>